Invading the internet, covering web 2.0, coast to coast, worldwide, and everywhere in between. This is where you put the social in social media. We are Social Blade. And hello, everyone, and welcome back once more to the Social Blade Show, episode number 33. I am Jason Ergo. I'm Patrick Faris. I'm Aaron Ryan. And I'm Victor Barrera. And just uh, once more, we're missing JD, who... Uh, Pat, where's JD today? I have no clue. He's, I, I, well, actually... And you should have prepared me a little better for this. He's at his uh, daughter's violin recital. Well, I could have said um, that. I thought you had a better story. Well, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I wasn't thinking. I should have said, hey, think of a clever way to find a spot where uh, JD's at. I would have come up with I, I'd have found something. Been like at a bus station feeding the homeless or, you know, at the – no one believed that he'd be at the March Madness. But, you know, I'd, I'd have found a spot for him somewhere, uh, you know. Trying to, um, he has a broken leg, something like that. Yeah. No, I would never do stuff like that. I don't make stuff like that. <laughs> I would never. Oh, God. Like that at all. So, okay, on behalf of JDE, I'm going to ask you, how was your week? Um, my weekend was, uh, my week was actually good. So far, I'm undefeated in the, um, in the uh, NCAA March Madness, so it's off to a good start. Um, I've been Ooh. getting a lot of, um, a, a lot of uh, well wishes from the people. This being the last show, and uh, I really appreciate that. And, um, Your last show, not it, it's been a weird week. Uh, the, um, my last show, um, and um, been 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 doing pretty good. The, my site, CrazyCrackers.com, that I do with Deathwish808, kind of hitting a buzzsaw, but we're we're putting out some good stuff. I mean, if you ever check it out, Deathwish808 is really a talented guy. He's, uh, put some really good stuff together for the site so other than that i'm doing good i'm excited because leela's here emfk and i'm looking forward to hearing the stories and and getting to her Ergo, i agree are, are you, are you removing comments again no those are not <laughs> done by me that's done by the people in the room there so uh, they, they i don't know that's that. so a lot of uh, some of the people are doing it. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. So let, let's uh, let's get right into it here, uh, Victor. I, I think you wanted to talk to us about some uh, some I guess deep thoughts from uh, our friends at Google. Yeah. Uh, you know, Google's CEO Eric Schmidt. Um, he's been doing this series with uh, the BBC called, um, I, think it's called I believe it's called like Technology Giants or you know Development Digital Giants. Giants. Digital Giants. That's correct. Thank you for correcting me. Uh, but basically, the last segment was really interesting because, I mean, as anybody, everybody knows, you know, Google's this huge behemoth, you know, the search engine um, innovator originally, and you know, they're they're consistently um, finding ways to integrate things like socialized information via social networks, like you know, Twitter, uh, Facebook, MySpace, Dig, et cetera, et cetera, and trying to figure out how to how to best utilize this information in the context of things like. Um, social shirts, um, you know, which is becoming increasingly more relevant um, it, for people who are really doing a lot more hanging out in the social media sphere. And, you know, in general, um, you know, in terms of the way that the direction that information seems to be traveling on the web is, is more through a kind of social filter or social lens, so to speak. And so, you know, Google's always on the leading edge of things trying to figure out okay, well, how do we prevent things like, you know, information overload? How do we simplify the search process? Um, you know, utilizing things like, um, you know, consistent uh, location-based uh, data, uh, depending on where people are doing searches, um, when they're logged into their Google profiles, and, you know, they can be given some more personalized uh, web-based experiences. And, and so, you know, there's all this really exciting development going on in that world in terms of, you know, utilizing social data, you know, pictures geotagged uh, through Flickr, uh, you know, uploads to, to Posterous and, you know, Twitter updates. And um, it, it's all really exciting in terms of, like, how Google's really planning to make sense of this. How, how are they going to use all of this uh, information and use it so that they can create a streamlined, more personalized, more relevant uh, digital experience for people, and he went on to talk about um, 
one technology that I'm sure a lot of people have really been interested in over the past maybe six, seven months is uh, augmented reality. And, you know, I know that it seems a little gimmicky, like if you have an iPhone and you've got like Wikitude um, on it, which is a, a really cool application that syncs up, um, you know, you, that matches up your location and what you're uh, witnessing through your iPhone with data from things like Wikipedia, Flickr, and other kind of branded um, hubs of information. Um, and, and yeah, you know, it's the direction everything's going is, you know, Google Schmidt or Google, the Google CEO, Eric Schmidt, believes that one day, you know, the mobile devices in our pockets will just kind of be in a, a de facto augmented reality mode that's going to be taking all of the socialized information and presenting what's useful to us at that point in time. Whether we're walking down a street in, uh, in let's say, Los Angeles and you walk by like City Hall and your phone gives you a buzz and is giving you information about, you know, the history and founding of LA and relevant information that maybe can assist you on your journey and stuff. And um, it's, it's really pretty crazy. I mean, I, what do you really think of um, those kind of technologies, Ergo? Since I know that you're a, a programmer, developer kind of guy, and, you know, what do you think of this? I, I, I totally agree. I, I think that with all the different <laughs> technology uh, aspects here, um, it really is going to be improving uh, in the future with like everything being tied in. I, I think that's I, absolutely right. I totally. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to make one statement, simple and brief. Apple, Google, win, win. Google, Apple, win, win. You can't go wrong. They're, they're, they're the two best things on the internet. That, enough said. Mm -hmm. from, me, from me. Enough said <laughs> from me. Aaron? Well, it sounds exciting. Um, what else sounds exciting is, is our good friend Facebook. Um, they're going to be making some changes on our interwebs. And as you know, um, Facebook has been powerful in its growth since the beginning um, in 2004. And even more so in the last year as they have opted in and opting out. As we reported last week that Facebook is looking to add locations to their platform, they're also planning on adding new locations for pages. This means that in April, Facebook will announce that they are launching a tool set for web developers to allow them to create websites that look and function more like the pages on Facebook. They are calling it the Open Graph API. Now to us non-developers, close your ears, Ergo. <laughs> this means that users will be able to fan the website. The information of the website will show up in their streams on Facebook and will be found in the user's Facebook search results as well as their profiles. Just like the pages you are a fan of now that allows you to keep informed about the page, the connection between you becoming a fan of a website will do the exact same abilities that you have with inside Facebook pages as these websites be on outside Facebook type pages. With the success of the third party capabilities that allow you to send information to your Facebook account from any website that has implemented this very successful Facebook Connect, the Open Graph API looks to be another huge leap into transmitting outsourced information back to Facebook, which will in return have you spending more time on the site. Since any website that integrates this development onto their site will allow you to keep up to date on the variety of your favorite websites without ever having to leave Facebook. Do we think this is a great idea or is this going to hurt the traffic on those websites? What do you guys think? I think it's an, oh man, I think this is an awesome idea. Just that uh, it won't hurt the traffic on, uh, traffic on the websites themselves for sure because they'll be getting more people interacting with it and Facebook itself maybe it'll hurt traffic going to their site but they'll still have people using their product uh, outside of it and they're still gonna have to go to the site as well to manage it and, um, I'm sure they'll have the branding there and all of that I, I really don't see any losses here just great uh, idea yeah I definitely agree I think you know um, connecting us as, as users um, and bringing us to Facebook, you know, I'm a fan of Facebook, Pat fist bump. Um, you know, I, I'm a fan of Facebook. So, you know, if I get to spend more time there and be able to see what's going on outside of Facebook in my news stream, then I'm going to be a pretty happy girl. 
So I'm sure that a lot of people are going to be integrating this into their websites and I don't see it failing. Yeah, no, so, no, absolutely. Like, like, like right now, the only real integration uh, with the fan pages now is, you know, it has that little badge that shows up on the site. We have it on our own site. It says join our fan page or something like that. Um, if they can add all the functionality beyond that with leaving comments, the commenting system um, and whatever else people choose to do, it's great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What happened to... Um, I thought I lost Virgo for a second. No, we're still here. So I wanted to take just a, a brief moment to talk about our sponsor, hothardware.com. Uh, make sure you check out the site. Uh, they have the latest reviews on the latest technology here. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, there's just a story put up uh, about um, <laughs> my favorite uh, hard drive manufacturer here with uh, the, the hard drive that I plan on getting. Uh, they did a great review on it here, so uh, check it out at the site, hothardware.com. Sweet. Very nice. Um, one of the questions that I'd want to know is, I, Victor, are you, do you fill out your uh, March Madness poll uh, brackets for the uh, NCAA tournament this year? Of course, and I, I do the same one that I do every year with some of my college buddies, and um, I've yet to actually win, but you know, got a lot of high hopes this year. Well, I, you know, I've, I've done pretty well with it, and, and shocker to find out last night, Mr. Ergo filled one out as well. Yes, I, no I did actually. Did you oh wow! Believe that? Uh, I'll pull it up here on the screen. I, I know nothing about basketball, but um, yeah, these were my picks. I don't even know who played in the games. Uh, you guys said there was games today or something, so I. I, I, I tell you what, <laughs> Russ Palmer will be happy when he sees this. <laughs> Yeah. So. National champion. I'm sorry, who? <laughs> National champion. There no. you go. Look at that, Rush. You see that? National champion, Maryland. <laughs> I don't know about that, man. Well, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm rooting for him, and uh, I, I I actually uh, pick Kentucky, but uh, oh, there's well. a reason behind that. Um, and uh, I, I basically what it is, is is I think it's a good time right now. What um. All the last sports people in college basketball, just really they watched the last couple of weeks leading up into the March Madness. And um, this is a big time of the year for college basketball. And if you're a fan of college basketball and you've got the NCAA brackets, you might want to um, check our uh, blog after the show because we'll have posted up their Mashable link that will allow you to uh, keep track of uh, your brackets and, and what you've done and how you're doing in all your polls as well. Um, is this something that you would use, Victor? Um, yeah, you know, it's a great way to keep up on uh, on the bracketology, you know, because, I mean, I remember back in the day when you filled out brackets, like you just printed out a piece of paper, posted them on a wall. But I think because of the technology available that it's, you know, might as well integrate with what's available. You know, there's a lot of specialized uh, applications that have been released because of March Madness. And, you know, they serve the sole purpose of keeping us informed, keeping us up to date on, uh, on, on posting, you know, the results of our brackets. And, and it's becoming more interactive. There's a lot of media that's being integrated, whether it's things like, you know, statistics, highlight reels, or sometimes even watching the game live, um, you know. So it's, it's a pretty exciting time. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to lie, I'm not the biggest college basketball fan, um, but this is about the time when I do the most college basketball watching uh, throughout the year. Um, although I do try to catch some, you know, a lot of action during the year, but this is kind of it. You know, this is the pinnacle uh, moments of the of the uh, of, of the season. So, you gotta get. I I totally agree. And um, that being said, I, I I know that there's a lot of dig users in this room, and a lot of uh, you know them are into it as well. And um, another thing that's happening is uh, there's big changes coming to dig. Is bracketology part of it, Ergo? Yeah, yeah, there definitely are uh, a, a lot of big changes coming to DIG. Um, what they're planning on doing uh, is basically rewriting the entire site. Uh, they're changing uh, a whole bunch of aspects. They're, they're going to first off be giving a personalized homepage uh, where in, instead of having the main well, yeah, instead of having the main page where you go and has every single story there, 
uh, it's going to be a personalized page based off of uh, certain things that you've dug recently or um, things that you've submitted or commented on and, and basically sort of like the recommendation engine uh, but uh, just a w without having I guess an upcoming but uh, acting uh, in general to, to basically personalize the news better to give you uh, a feeling of what's going on there uh, beyond that uh, they're not going to be having uh, submitters submitting absolutely everything there they're going to be allowing uh, the basically big websites to submit stories via the API using RSS or similar methods there. So on big sites like, uh, I, I don't know, ones that people submit all the time. Cracked. 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 Yeah. All, all of those ones Cracked. that uh, mm. you guys know what I think about. <laughs> um, there, you're not going to have to rush to submit them. Uh, it's going to be automatically done for you. <laughs> so um, basically. How about other changes know because they seem to have a laundry list of different things that they're going to be implementing once the new jig actually uh launches mm -hmm. yeah they're they're also one of the main things also uh they're not going to care as much about uh what logged in users are doing uh, in the sense of you know going there and upcoming and looking through the stories and digging the ones you like uh since there's just been way too many stories there these days uh i think at the moment right now there's around 20 or so thousand or sorry yeah 20 or so thousand a day give or take uh in with uh, submissions being submitted um automatically there's going to be <laughs> millions perhaps uh, or at least hundreds of thousands so what they're going to be doing is uh, first off uh, taking signals from other networks such as Twitter and Facebook so whenever a story is shared on there that's going to count a little bit towards uh, if it's going to be promoted or not on dig uh, and also they're going to allow people that aren't actually logged in to also uh, actually dig things and have it count so well will it, will it, mon will it uh, dig into uh, reddit as well that's a, you know, it very well might. Uh, they, they haven't said that, but uh, it's quite possible. Or are possible. they just going to leave uh, Lieutenant General Pan as that connection? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think LT Jim Panda, his, uh, his role of filtering the best content on Reddit to dig will not be in jeopardy. Do not worry one bit. Oh, great. How about Miguel Lopez? Is he still going to be able to submit his 20 a day? You know, I, I have a feeling that he, he's going to be one of those people that gets cut off a lot because he submits a lot of big whitelisted uh, websites and, and they're great content. And so I think that those content publishers um, are just going to want to, you know, auto automatically syndicate through the Dig API a lot of those uh, submissions. I mean, if you're cracked, if you're a pod, I mean, if you're one of those sites where, like, no matter what you publish, it makes it the front page, this is just a way... Um, to streamline the process, you know, make it a little easier for them, because there's still a lot of people that are technically going to be digging it, you know, no matter who sub who, who subs it or not, you know. So that's uh, yeah. that's my thought on that one issue. But you know, I'm personally a little mixed um, about a lot of what the new dig is going to be about. Um, I actually love some of the some of the prop proposals there, but I actually really don't um, understand or really like some of the uh, changes that are coming, which I think are inherently antisocial. Uh, one such change that I'm speaking of is the is the role of anonymous users. Um, you know, I, I think the purpose of DIG and what made DIG great from a community perspective was that people had to be logged in to participate, whether it was to vote or to comment, and now people aren't going to even have oh. to be logged in to, to vote, to submit, you know, so I'm not really sure... Um, that specific change is facilitating anything that's more social. Well, Victor, uh, Victor, you know, Victor, uh, re regarding that specifically, uh, the, the purpose of DIG was basically to take the best news and use crowdsourcing to get uh, the best stories shown to the most amount of people as possible. So right. being social in the sense that you have to have an actual account doesn't necessarily take that in, uh, into account. It, really what they need to do is just have the most different places where people are voting on stories via the dig or just sharing it uh, and taking that into account that that effectively does what they're trying to do to crowdsource uh, edit the best news and publish the best news so I, 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 I kind of disagree know to make fun of Jason <laughs> <laughs> yeah no you won't know, who we know I, to make fun of come on yeah absolutely I mean there, there will <laughs> definitely you know, be a lot less aspects. accountability but there it'll still it here's, should here's be here's the better. thing Ergo it's um 
Diggs kind of been moving towards this, you know, sort of integrating antisocial elements, and and it's not really that that's a bad thing. I just think that, um, you know, basically opening the floodgates. I mean, think about how many people actually are using Dig um, in terms of the people who visit the front page. I mean, there's a huge disparity between front page visitors and activity just because most people are going to the Dig front page, clicking through, and checking out, like like you said, the hottest news on the web via Dig. And, you know, I, I know that the, on, the anonymous vote is going to do a lot of things like bump up participation, and in general, it's going to increase the average Dig count for stories who knows uh, how much. And, um, you know, I think that in itself is good, but, you know, at the point where people can, you know, basically be identityless, um, there, there's no social relevancy to that because part of the reason or the significance of social networks are the, the identities or the characters or the personalities um, that really kind of have their own style, their own contribution to, to the way of, to, to basically my experience on Dig. So, um, I just think that it's going to be heavily skewed, that you're going to see Dig become a little less social, a little more mainstream, and a little more synced up with what's buzzing on Twitter, what's buzzing on Facebook, which ultimately is, is one of their goals because, you know, like Jay Adelson said in that interview with Wired, you know, he, he doesn't like the fact that there's big news that is popping on every other social media site that is really getting hot and trending, um, but Dig is one of the few places where that news can basically be yesterday's news today. And, you know, this is obviously one, one great way to fix that. I just am not sure it's worth the cost of opening up the floodgates to anonymous users to, to basically be able to do everything a logged in user can do, um, but not be really socially accountable for, for what they are, for what they're doing, for how they're interacting. And, and that's just, I mean, obviously, yeah, it's not, um, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, Static99 says Dig has taken anti social changes, removing avatars, removing shouts. Yeah. He's mixed on that, but seems rather antisocial in his opinion. Yep. Same as with some of the upcoming changes. Yeah. But they're integrating Facebook and Twitter, so well, not officially. Is that really it's, anti-social? What they're doing is Dig They've already done that in the networks. past. Yeah, no, they're going to be crawling uh, links in, in, on Twitter and Facebook through their own new technology that they're developing, um, similar to, to ways that you know Tweet, Meme, and Topsy kind of aggregate, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Twitter data concerning certain Bitly links and stuff. I mean, they're going to kind of do the same thing. They're going to basically, um, in, in, you know, in, in a real-time way, rate what is really getting hot on the web and when something will need to be syndicated across the board to all the dig users. And, you know, I think that in general, like on paper, that is a great concept. Um, but the way in which it's going to be implemented and at what cost to the average dig user that has been committed to the community that really enjoys it for what it is and what it, uh, you know, what it offers to people like us, um, you know, I don't know. I'm a little mixed, although I'm definitely very excited for, uh, you know, a lot of other changes. But, um, but yeah, it's it's just really interesting what's going on. And, and the truth is, none of us are really going to know what it's like until we all start getting on the uh, dig beta, which should be happening at some point soon here, I believe by early April. Well, that kind of leads us into our uh, guest, our, um, Miss Leela Reed. Mrs. Leela Reed, I'm sorry. Are you there, Leela? Yeah, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Hi, how you doing? Welcome. That's fine. Everybody that doesn't know, this is EMFK, our social blade, dig user of the world, uh, of the year. Very good, very good. Yes, Congratulations. Yes. And obviously, to get this, you have to have a large fan base. And um, before we get into your account, um, let's take into consideration, um, there were several people that were voted on them. We had a total of five that were actually, actually six, that were um, mentioned for the final voting. Um, over a course of a month, we had over 30 people that were actually suggested, um, some great big people that had more in there. Uh, there are a lot of people out there, not just Leela, EMFK. The, there are a lot of people that drop comments and click the thumbs and and um, dig and everything, and it's it's a hard thing. But uh, you know, I mean, and there are a lot of people that were picked. Uh, but I, I got to tell you, it, you really it was. I don't want to say it was overwhelming, but uh, you you are loved out there, Leela. Um, there are a lot of people that just were just the words that were spoken about you uh, were just 
outstanding. You'd really be, which I, I, you know, I'll show them to you sometime, but uh, it, it's really good because, um, you know, there's so, like I said, there's so many good everyday diggers out there. There's hundreds of them. And um, to be thrown at the top, you know, above the Andy, uh, Mr. Baby Man, the M. Salines, the Talsachis, the uh, it's Ergo and Victor and um, and Oh Boy and you know, there's some good diggers around. Um, and how does that make you feel? Oh, I'm 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 honored, and I was just really uh, just honored to be nominated with everyone else: uh, Bad Cat, Alan, and you, uh, Blinker, Greg, um, Pork Fried Rice. So congratulations to all of them. Well, good. Um, let me ask you this: How did you get involved with Dig? What was what was the reason behind? I actually uh, was basically dragged over here by a friend, uh, a group of people from another website, and so uh, they lost what some was juice. What the other website? Uh, it, it was Free Republic. I came over here from Free Republic. And so, basically, they lost interest after a week, and so a few of us were left. And so I decided that I really just didn't care about the politics. I would just rather uh, find things that were more interesting. So I found technology and science, and that was it. I was hooked. Well, um, you know, I'm not on DIG anymore, but I, I do, you know, follow it, and I do see you up there. And I, I, I haven't noticed a whole lot of what you're digging, but I do know that uh, you do... You're, you are in the tech. Now, is that really what you're into? And, um, and, and I mean, you kind of just answered that question, but I just want to touch on it a little bit because uh, basically, um, that, is that a niche for you? Or, but you seem to do well in other places as well. Oh, I prefer tech. I like tech because I like to buy a lot of tech stuff. So I'm, uh, I'm like Ergo. So I, I saw his wish list from Newegg, and it was exactly like what I had. I was just like, yeah, that's that's me. I could spend uh, the whole day at Hot Hardware or, you know, Wired or elsewhere. Yeah, I I think, you know, there's a lot of chicks that like tech on Dig, and so I, I love Dig for that reason because there's a lot of chicks that, you know, are into uh, tech, they're into science, very intelligent, awesome. Um, a lot of them are here tonight, so, you know, I just I I'm really proud to be among some of the female diggers here because they show that there is more to life than just entertainment and gossip columns. Um, you know, we like other things besides that. Even though I don't think I was supposed to say that there are females on dig, so sorry for letting that out. <laughs> <laughs> Cats on not, well, what, what you're not supposed to talk about is that there are females on dig that are actually guys. That's the part you're not supposed to talk about. It, people know that there are women out there, and they're very good women. They're the ones that don't talk about their nut sack all the time when they're in the comment section. Um, <laughs> tell, tell us a little bit about your secret. Do you have a certain um, – I understand if you don't want to give it all away, but, I mean, do you have, like, a certain set pattern? Like, I, I submit, and then I go do 100, or I dig 20, and after I submit, I, I, I dig 20, and then I, I – favored it or do you have something where you do like that no i just i just i have mutuals i have 134 mutuals uh they sub stuff and i go dig it that's my that's my secret i i try to dig before i submit uh, i figure i need their help so i will dig their stuff first and yes i confess i tend to be a blind digger at times but i'm trying to do better so i'm trying to tweet people's stuff so i apologize if you're one of my mutuals and and I've just been, I haven't commented on your stuff. I'm going to work on that. So. Uh, um, well, apparently someone thinks you are because that, that's what was said about you. Uh, is one of the things. Um, now, what was some of your highlights? I know when you and I talked, you were like, you were trying to get down to where, I, you actually passed Kevin Rose, didn't you? I, I think I tied Ooh. Kevin Rose, maybe. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, so I figure I, I'm there, so that's it. I'm, I'm done with dig. I'll just keep digging, I guess. Because um, basically, everyone uh, ahead of me, you know, they're just, they provide a lot of good content, and I enjoy a lot of the content that is shared. Um, I, I am with Ergo. <laughs> I can't stand the cracked 
stuff. Um, I apologize for all the craft lovers out there. I'm not one of them. Um, but I, but if one of my mutual subs it, I will dig it. So, Lila, what, oh, <laughs> what, what type of news? What type of news do you prefer? What type of? Pardon me. I'm sorry. Wait, Pat's having a, an ADD I, moment. I, what? Or if you look on the screen. screen real quick. Go ahead, Aaron. Okay. Go ahead, Aaron. Ask your question. Okay. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to know, okay, so, and what type of news do you like? Because as you said, like, Jason likes, you know, a little bit of old school dig where it's more about tech news. Not all of it, before I get interrupted by Jason. But um, what kind of news do you like, then, if, if you want to stray away from Cracked or... Are you into pictures? Are you into videos? Or do you like the straight on articles? I, I and what like, type? I, I pretty much like uh, any articles. I do love Russ. Russ, I do love your articles. I do love your subs. Um, but I do like uh, Kate, uh, Jan in Colorado. I like uh, interesting story, heartwarming stories. Um, I, you know, there's some stuff that I have read from. Um, Canada, um, you know, basically I like news that's outside of the United States. Uh, I prefer um, the BBC or the Telegraph, uh, basically, um, for world news. I get tired of, you know, a lot of the, the Washington Post, the, the Washington Times. I get tired of those types of news. But I do love tech. I like tech um, stories because I'm always looking for something that I have to have. So... You know, I just basically that's why I love tech, and I like to, I like to see you know where people are getting their their sources, and you know, and I like to read their stuff. But you know, uh, other than that, I I will support almost anything. But the one thing that I really wish that Dig would you know do a little bit different is to move the politics elsewhere. It just gets on my nerves. Um, you know, I'm one of those elsewhere. The politics. Um, you know, oh, okay. I, I I don't. I may not agree with certain people, but I think one of the, the problems that I see with Dig is that um, they highlight all of these these people that are just like, you know, you're wrong, you're wrong, you know, I'm right, you're wrong, and it's just, I, I could really care less about that. I mean, honestly, I, I'm there for the tech, I'm there for the science, I could care less about, you know, what your political views are on this or that, it's like, move on, so. Well... Um, you and I were talking the other day, and it's not the first time you and I have talked on the phone. Um, and, and I will say this, that I did not vote during uh, the uh, voting, so it's not like, you know, I stuffed the ballot box or anything. Trust me, that's not a, not the case. But uh, you and I have talked on the phone before. and You're in the tech. It, it seems to be something that's in there with the family as well. Am I right? I mean, you were telling me that for a hobby, your kids fix Xboxes. Oh, now they're yeah. going to start, they're, nice. they're bored with that. Now they're going to figure out how to fix PlayStation. I got my order in already. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, oh, that's I, awesome. I mean, is it like a family thing? Do the kids like do anything or your husband do anything with you as far as dig? Or are you just something you do and you sit at the table and telling them, you know, hey, got a couple of pops on the homepage today on dig and they just kind of stare at you with their eyes glazed over and just nod their head and, and like, agree with you? Or do they actually know what, they're, what you're talking about? Um, my husband is in the Navy. He is a, uh, he's a, he's a geek. He's an IT for the, for the Navy. And he really doesn't give a rip about DIG. Um, <laughs> all he cares about is that the FBI doesn't show up at our door. That's pretty much his only role. That's, that's a bonus. That's, that's a good plan. A bonus. Yeah. So, yeah. so Lelia, um, you know, I, I noticed that, uh, you know, that you have some kind of causes that you really enjoy, um, kind of, you know, broadcasting on Dig or using Dig as a platform for, and one such is um, things like net neutrality and uh, electronic, uh, you know, kind of web freedom, you know, uh, and so, because I, I, I notice you sub a lot from um, Electronic Freedom Foundation. So is that like a cause that you just really like, you know, take it on yourself and, you know, consciously make a decision to sub these things to dig? Is it just something that you really enjoy uh, interacting with and uh, sharing with people? I do. I like, I, I am a big supporter of EFF. Uh, there's some things which they support maybe I don't agree with, but for the most part, I agree with probably 95% of their causes. Uh, 
you know, basically the government is, they don't have the right to tell you where you should surf. They don't have the right to tell you um, what you can do while you're on uh, online. I, you know, basically they have just, it, they're like the movie and the, I, I mean, if you want to really get me riled, get me started on the movie and the music industry, which we don't have oh, enough yeah. time in the night. Sure. So basically <laughs> I, I, I'm very passionate about those, those issues. I, um, you know, we have, um, we have been pretty much um, basically, I don't know, held hostage by the cable companies. Uh, we have terrible internet speed mm. in this country. Sure. We do not have, um, you know, people who don't travel outside of this country. They don't realize that we are, we are behind. We are behind at least, you know, 10 years when it comes to technology. The things that we are trying to do now, you know, they've done that already in Japan or in Korea, South Korea, so, um, and Taiwan. And it's just like we need to, you know, get up to the standard. We're not even up to standard as far as our broadband. I mean, they're trying, but, you know, it just, we're, we're slowly getting there. But, you know, I don't think we have an administration right now that, you know, really understands what, you know, where we need to be as far as technology. So. Very true, and I, you made a lot of good points, and you def, I definitely get the sense that uh, this is a this is a specific area where you you know you're very passionate about. So I'm glad uh, you're here to share some of that with us today. You know, you make some very good points there. And I completely, I completely agree with you. Um, the word hostage, very good word. Um, I feel as though we have been held hostage. You should see. Um, Ergo's doing a, a speed test right now on the screen, but. Um, Canada, it's, it's way worse, and it's different all across. So where I am located right now, it's really bad. And you're right. I mean, uh, we should have the abilities. and Well, actually, we do have the abilities. They should be shared with us <laughs> um, and stop keeping us hostage, as you said. So, yeah, good word. Totally agree with you. Um, well, we can hey, Ergo, a lot. You, I'm sorry. Ergo, when you get a chance, can you put that screen back up for yep. me, the one with the... Uh, the power list i wanted to uh get, I, I noticed something when get, you had it up there. get it right, um, get it right here for you okay um it'll be loading it'll be there um Leela, i wanted to talk to you about uh briefly about march madness now people are like well why are you bothering about that uh can you zoom in just a little bit uh, where what number is she at uh she's 68 she's like 68 and look who's at 71 uh you passed me <laughs> You passed me the other day, Leela. Very nice. Uh, you, you passed Kevin Rose, and you passed, you're tied with uh, Run Dig MC. And you're tied with uh, Bixby. Very nice. But uh, getting back to my um, getting back to my question, um, you're a big college football fan, aren't you? Oh, I, yeah. Basically, my friendships are on hold from <clears throat> essentially the end of August. <laughs> Till um, after bowl season is over, so pretty much uh, the second week of January. <laughs> hey, guess what? I got another. Uh, I'm coaching the 70 pound football team this year. I'm starting over, third time through. I'm gonna wow. start nice. from the bottom and coach through the ranks again. Oh. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Good luck. Your son's playing this year. Well, yeah. Thank you, Erga. Makes you pretty old, Pat. I, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm oh, feeling wait, it. Wait, what was that? Oh, we got JD. Is that JD? <laughs> Where was that? Yeah, yeah. Or is that Hi, the JD. soundboard of JD? <laughs> no, that's actually him. He's on the line. Look at that. Oh, no, we got we got we got JD Rucker on the show. JD awesome. can't JD can't dedicate a whole show. He's only for the last ten minutes of our show these days. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm a it in, or is he gonna join us? I am a part timer. Hold on. PT PTJD. Um, Karen, are we gonna are we gonna present the uh, a trophy, the award to uh, Leela? Yes. Now, Leela, what are you gonna do with this? Could you honor us by uh, using it as an avatar for a day somewhere, either on Twitter or Dig or something, or maybe I'll, Facebook or something like that? Like that? Absolutely. I'll do it tonight. <laughs> I will I, I, send it to you. Oh, cool. And, and you can do it with it what you want. 
That is really cool. Thanks, Aaron. You're welcome. JD, do you have any guests for, I mean, any guests? Do you have any questions for our Steam guests? JD. Okay. Yeah, cut off JD. He's got an echo or something. He's not talking. Uh, there's no echo over here. Um, it's okay. Okay. Um, let's see. I. Uh, is there any goals that you have left with Dig? I mean, there's obviously getting a thousand or something like that. But do you have any uh, regular goals? Um, like a thousand's not out of the question for you. Yeah, there. I mean, you know, that would be nice if I got a, a thousand. But, you know, honestly, some of my goals really deal with more. It's more on a personal level. I would like to see more female diggers. I would like to see them uh, rise. Yeah. You know, I, I just I think that there are a lot of female diggers um, that are currently, you know, working their way through the ranks of dig, but they don't realize that there are a lot of female diggers at the top um you know I, I know people talk about mr baby man which is fantastic and emsaline but you know ladies we have you know absolutely true we have amy vernon we have be shirt happy we have surfer s we have aaron um you know we have we have people like janico um we have so many females that are up uh, there at the top and it's like you know uh, I, I heard a lady yesterday who said, well, you know, there's just not enough female diggers. And I'm like, what planet are you on? Are you not looking, you know, and the, because they don't know, they don't have an idea of, you know, that there are females out there because, you know, the joke is always that there's no females on dig, but you know, I would like to see more females, uh, it succeed at dig. So, you know, even if I have to find them off the street, you know, and just <clears throat> sucker them into uh, joining dig, then, you know, Th that's my goal. My goal is to be as helpful as possible. Well, as yeah. a woman on dig, I have to say, like yourself and and the other ladies you have mentioned, have led a very fantastic way to inspire women like me who are fairly new to dig to want to achieve to something. Um, you know, because if it was all males, it would be pretty boring. So I agree with you. We need more females on dig, but. I think more importantly, we need the awareness that there are actually females on dig, and they can they can be more than um, at the bottom of the feeder. So, I mean, yeah, having well, you on today is great, and and being and being voted um, as the top dig user on uh, of, of the Social Blade crew, um, that's that's impressive, and I and I congrat I congrat you because this is a. Uh, it's amazing to have you on here and be able to talk about digging. And, and, you know, if anyone's listening out there that's a female, you know, um, connect with us, you know, and and get yourself on dig. Oh, I agree. I absolutely agree. I um, I see Miss Linda. Uh, she's fantastic. There's pork fried rice, obviously. Thoughts on this. Uh, there are so many. Uh, mm -hmm. Angel War Driver. There are so many females. And I just, I look forward to seeing them succeed. But, but also with our success comes you know a lot of men that are really supportive uh, you know Michael Pinto is supportive mm -hmm. uh, Pat he was very supportive Victor so you know a lot of these females are kind of you know they're shy they don't know who to ask or um, but you can ask a lot of these guys and they will they will help you out um, Mark Frost he looks like he's you know available to help so if you have any questions ask Mark yep I, I still help people and I know a lot of other people do as well and uh, it's and, and I will say this for the women diggers and it's not the complete sausage fest that you make it out to be um, and and yet yeah, the people that you name there's a lot of good female diggers out there and one thing you'll notice uh, the people that snipe and go after the uh, sure thing hits and steal from imager I don't I can't think of one woman that does it there all the female diggers that, that go after Unique stuff, funny stuff, uh, interesting stuff, uh, eye-catching stuff, not the sure thing stuff, but good stuff, quality stuff, stuff that, you know, that, that dig should be, not a guaranteed, you know, the, I don't want to say the oatmeal because the oatmeal is awesome stuff and everything should make the front page. And crack's good, but not everything should make it. A pod should not be an everyday thing. But, uh, I mean, as far as female 
diggers go, as far as diggers go, um, you're an excellent, excellent digger, uh, Leela, and it was an honor to have you on the show tonight. And um, I, I can't thank you enough for being our guest. And um, you, you're you're awesome digger. And like I said, there's plenty of them out there, so please don't hate on me, you know, later for saying this. But you, 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 you're outstanding digger, and uh, I, people like you, I wish I was still on dig helping. Well, you know, I, I really appreciate all the support. Thank you to everyone. Um, really, my success on dig is because someone, um, basically Bad Cat, helped me. So I think he saw a lost cause, and he thought, you know, somebody needed help, and here I was. So I definitely want to thank Bad Cat for helping me, to at least steering me in the right path. So And for Pat for talking to me, adding me, and then um, then you got banned after you added me. So, you know, I feel bad about that. So. But believe me, it's not because you're a bad luck charm. It's because I'm a band digger, and apparently I'm not allowed to play with it. Maybe if I contact them and talk nice to them and say, look, there's a new dig coming out, maybe this time they'll write back and say, no. <laughs> so I, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't count on it. But I'm always around to help. You know? I think you should, you should just come back as a girl and add to the female digger union. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think if you keep shot. trying to come back, Pat, you'll get a restraining order against you. Uh, you know, I... I <laughs> If, if, if you know honestly, I, I think if they're, they're, well, you know, it, it's good. I, I'm fine. I, I just let it go. That I, I like dig. I enjoy dig. I just can't play with dig. It's it's sort of like uh, I don't want to get into that either. <laughs> I better stop right there. But once again, thanks a lot, Leva, for being on the show. Thanks for yes. having me. Thank you, Leva. Thank um, you. Okay. So Pat, are you are you going to talk about what's been going on in the chat room? No, he didn't fall for it one day. <laughs> oh, he did. I, it, it's he did, like... but he did quietly. <laughs> oh, did he? Okay, yes, he um... did. <laughs> All right, Ergo. Yes, Pat. Were you act? Okay, you are the king of the April Fool joke, <laughs> and I got together oh, yeah. with some other people. And I, I just, I, it's a harmless joke, but I knew you'd get flustered by it, and we were in on it. We wanted to, uh, we just wanted to um, do the April Fool joke now, and I'm glad to see that it got you a little bit. I'll find out where. <laughs> is, is it in the Skype room? Oh, there? it's it. Copy. No, yeah, you got me. Private room with me. <laughs> it's what? And you did get him. Okay. It's in a, it's it in a, a private room. He, he wrote me, and he was just a very upset. What's going on? What's happening? And um, well, I, copy said, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Copy and paste it in there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's not like he sent a twit pic of his penis. Just drop the thing in the room there. So Yeah, thanks, Mark, uh, Jerry, <laughs> Ted. <laughs> you, you did that. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> so... Um, now, um, at this time, this is this will be my last show on Social Blade as a co-host. Uh, I, I'd like to first of all thank all the hosts, um, Aaron, Ergo, Victor, JD. It's been a pleasure working with you all and, and enjoyed it. Um, I, I this is not an April Fool joke. This is this is true. Uh, the show's going in a direction um, that's very going to be very lucrative and. Um, very nice uh they're going to be very successful and uh when i say lucrative things are going to start looking up for them i did not do this for money so and i am not the type of person that's a journalist so i decided that i was going to try and move on and do another show and at some point i uh i do plan on announcing what that show is going to be and when it'll be about it it ha it is in production, and I think I summed up the last member today. Uh, I haven't even told the other people involved. Um, I'd like to thank Ted and Ed and Zach for spreading the rumor that I have all over cancer, and I'd like to thank um, I'd like to thank Ed for Ed Hubert for actually inspiring me to do this show. Uh, it's unfortunate that uh, 
his computer went in the shop and like the weirdest thing. I mean, we were all gun ho and then he disappeared for a couple of weeks and Aaron and I were just like, we don't know what we're going to do. Um, next person or group of people I'd like to thank would be uh, Dave Atavella and Mark Chapetta from Hot Hardware. Guys, I can't thank you enough. Um, your help. I, I the the thing that I sent that you sent me in the Facebook as far as uh, as far as the um, helping for the malware remover has worked. And yeah, I did pay for something, and it was twenty nine bucks. And I got a bunch of stuff for it, and um, it's working on every computer. And I only had to pay for it the one time. The um, next group of people that I want to thank are the guests. Uh, everyone from Leela, uh, Amy Vernon, um, Andy, Louie, um, Marco May. We've had some great, fantastic guests, and I can't thank them all for uh, coming on and being patient and going through my, you know, my crazy questions or whatever. Uh, I hope that they had as much fun um, doing the show as I did interviewing them. And um, the people that I'd like to thank the most are the, the viewers, the ones that show up every week or almost every week. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's almost everyone in this room. Um, it, it's, it's, it's awesome to be a part of something like this when people come in and, you know, I, I don't, I don't know how to express how, how much I appreciate, the, uh, you know, seeing Amanda and Amy and, and Donna and, uh, Ronnie and Steve and Ted and, 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 um, just a, a bunch of, I, I, they're, they're more in here. Russ, I see in here all the time. And, and again, I'd like to thank all y'all. Uh, the one thing that I, I do want to mention what I'm working on is the new show, which doesn't have a name yet, but it's in production and it's, it's close. Uh, the other thing that I'm working on with, uh, with uh, J.D. and Ergo and a couple other people, including Andy and um, Greg Davies and uh, Silent J, uh, is nightlymedia.com, which is basically a hub for all the shows including social blade to drill down the new show that i'm doing social blend um there's a lot of shows in the work uh we got a sports show and we have a couple other ones that were uh cooking um, there's a well i haven't talked mm -hmm. to the cooking one but there's one with um uh i'm trying to think of it peas in a pod that's it is that right amanda we're uh, it's it's something that um, we're we're looking at there, and I, I'm really uh, looking forward to getting that off the ground. And it, it's it's being worked on, but it's not easy. It's, it's going to take some time. But uh, again, I'd like to thank all of you for your time and uh, patience. Um, sorry if I offended any of you. I'd like to tell you to go after yourself, but that's not the way I roll. <laughs> I offended you. It's because it happened by accident, not on purpose. One last thing, I would like to thank Aaron for all those awesome cartoons and animations. I love them. I got them plastered all over the place. You're welcome. Uh, we have, I have one last thing to give you. I don't know if you saw it on the screen, but um, you will be getting that after the show. Um, I do have some questions for you since it is your last show, and we're all trying to keep it together and keep it light. But, you know, since I am obviously your favorite show host, who was your favorite or most memorable guest, and why? Who who was my what? Most I know you can't get over the, the the first part. Who was your favorite or most memorable guest, and why? Uh, well, I I don't know. I I I I promised that I would never pick out a favorite guest because uh, there's so many of them, and you know, and you know I got a majority of them, and. I'd like to think that I got them and they're interesting. Therefore that made them good and enjoyable. I don't, I, I you know, the, the funnest ones the interview were the ones with the funny, the funniest interview that I, I enjoyed doing was the one with Andy. Um, that was pretty funny and not because he just said to say it in the room. Um, I know, um, Kane was good. I know, uh, I had, I always have a blast with Louie. Greg Davies, um, Steve, Al Poet, awesome. Um, there's I I can't name them all. Mark May was awesome. Um, 
there's Amy was a great guest. I, 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 I you can't mention one that we've had that I, I could say, wow, that was the one. So I, I know they I all add their own. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, what was your most memorable moment on the Social Blade show, and most memorable moment in a Social Blade meeting? My most memorable moment in a Social Blade meeting uh, would be one of the 10 or 12 times for being talked to for being offensive. And um, one of my most memorable times during the show would be one of the 10 or 12 times that I've offended people during the show. <laughs> How's that for an answer? <laughs> nice. You're one in the same. Okay. So, yeah, you have asked, I was going to ask you where you're off to next. But as you've already stated, you're going to be doing your own show, which we will support you and look forward to seeing it. So we hope you get an inside scoop on when it's going to happen and and learn a little bit more information about it as it as it goes along. I'm excited Absolutely. for you, Pat. But I do have Thank to you. say, on um, I have to say that I'm going to miss you personally. And um, today was a hard day to get through. I have to say it was really nerve wracking. I was anxious and, and nervous to say goodbye but I mean it's obviously not goodbye as our friendship just just as a co-host yeah I, I mean I, it's really it's not like I'm going anywhere and we will be talking throughout the you know time um, it just won't be as often I, I mean as, as what it is and and now when people contact you or one of the people on the show and say hey that guy's a uh, pretty offensive well you know now you can say well he's doing his own show now so I don't really care what he says so you can sit back and, and enjoy it instead of you know kind of uh, <laughs> yeah, just shrilling um, and, and, and all that being said you know this is a great time I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world um, working with you guys I've, I've learned so much and I've had a great time doing it it's, it's been nothing but pleasure Yes, thank you so much for 33 episodes. This is our 33rd episode and, and our last one with you. But um, I'm going to give the mic over to Victor or Ergo or JD to say what you feel like saying to Pat. Yeah, you know, Pat, I just want to say that I really uh, deeply appreciate, you know, basically having you create the show, the show, wonderful show that I've come to really enjoy uh, being a part of. And, you know, we got the best audience uh, on the web, you know, in that sense. And, you know, I can't thank you enough for how much work and, and effort you put into it and, you know, doing a lot of logistics and booking guests and making sure that, uh, you know, you're, you're putting fuel in the social blade show tank. And so, um, I, I really, I really do appreciate you, man. And, you know, you're always going to be a good friend and I'm going to miss you on the show, buddy. I really will. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it, Baker. Yeah, no, but as Aaron and Victor have been saying, uh, Pat, we really will be missing you here. You did bring uh, a huge part to the show here. Um, he brought us so many great guests uh, and always had really interesting and really funny things to say. I mean, you, sometimes you try to be a little uh, too funny when you don't even know you're just funny just in general. So. <laughs> We're going to miss you, Pat. We're going to miss you. Well, you know, you're the only one on the show that I've actually met face-to-face -face so far. That's true. And you're the next one that I have a scheduled meeting with and seeing. <laughs> and I come over to your house to do a little bit of plumbing work on your toilet. He's got a leaking toilet, and I'm going to go over there and fix it. And um, he's going to send a twit pic of my ass crack <laughs> out of, to his Twitter users. And I'm sure he'll be uh, saving that for the show. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, hello? No, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Judy. Judy, you're up. I uh, actually had a uh, speech prepared, Pat, but um, it was removed by Ergo, so I won't be able to. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be able to use that one, so I'm just going to have to ad lib. Ad lib with nice. my feelings coming to grips with 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 it in this uh, this past um, really eight months has been a an absolute roller coaster ride with you because every moment we don't know when there's going to be a 
be something said that's just going to crack the entire room up, that's going to to just have us have us laughing and or crying in tears, have her go face palming, have Aaron rolling her eyes and 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 uh, have Victor just 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 snot coming out of his nose, um, and then me of course just envying your your uncanny ability to deliver some absolutely amazing pure and natural comedy without even trying um this next show that you're going to be doing um again the details are are a mystery but i'm assuming that it's going to take advantage of your greatest gift which is to bring joy to people and make us crack up like no other no other dig user or non-dig user in history you are you are a scholar and a gentleman you say that you're not a journalist and yet your opinions have always been spot on with every story that we do so i'm still not not buying that whole thing um and i mean of all the people here you and i we've we've really uh you know we've, we've talked a lot we've really put put a lot of um a lot of thought into the the future of the show and i'm I'm glad I'm not on camera right now. Let me just say that because uh, because I I'm shaking shaking with uh, with emotions right now. Um, I'm gonna miss you, buddy. And uh, with that said, we don't have a guest for next week, so I was wondering if you would mind uh, <laughs> on and being a guest. <laughs> but, uh, just right, think gotta... What do you say? Have, have your agent contact me, and uh, we'll see if we can get you on. Um, well, you're going to have to give me the quirks that I've been passing out for weeks to get people on here. Actually, it's been it, it's been actually really easy to get people to do the show. Uh, people do want to come on and be a part of it. Um, all those words were very, very flattering, and I appreciate it. And, um, looking forward to doing it. And, one of the things that I, I do want to mention, I think a lot of people know, one of the uh, first people that I talked with uh, about doing the show is J.D. So J.D. is going to be part of the show. Um, as far as it being comical, I I hope so. You know, I mean, my goal isn't ever, you know, to really say things funny, just things that are on my mind. And uh, the last thing I'd like to say is... Um, it's not admirable being a social retard like myself. So, I mean, I wouldn't say that you admire uh, what I do, but I, I appreciate you saying it. Again, they're all flattering. And, um, again, thanks to everyone I else. I don't think that there's a way for it to not be comical. I mean, we could do, we could do a show on anything. We could do a show on, 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 on the Holocaust, and you would have people cracking up about, about it. So, uh <laughs> So yeah, you know, like I, I'm, I'm serious when I say I've never met anyone who is as naturally funny. And the 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 best parts are when you're hilarious and you don't even really mean to be. You just say what's on your mind, and it's like the most absurd and wonderful thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Yeah, that happens pretty much every other day. That's so. what I was trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just the natural. gateway. That was probably better. <laughs> uh. The gateway Brother, thing. I. That was me being serious, and I was kind of like getting frustrated with Ergo, and it's too long to explain now, but uh, yeah, it's <laughs> that was great. They told you not to bring it up, Ty. <laughs> yeah. You can talk about it on your next show there. <laughs> well, do you have a name of the show yeah, yet, well, by the well, way, well. or are you still working on that? It's too funny. Pat. Do you, have yeah. a, do you have a name for the show that you're working on, or, or is it still in the works? No, no. Um, I'll probably have some sort of a meeting this weekend to talk with people again. Uh, we, ha- we have some names. We just haven't narrowed it down. Um, we're working on a lot of good stuff. We've, we've talked. We've got a format laid out. Um, once we have it perfected and try and you know, do some production things where we actually run some practice shows, we may change the format a bit. So... My uh, my vote is for social knife. That's, that's what. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just wanted to. I, I something I got out of the social blade uh, green room that I wanted to share with everyone. Oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> what did it say? Uh, ergo, Mark and Ted and Jerry are pissing me off. <laughs> Aaron, 
wait for it. Erga, and Erga goes, and Pat. <laughs> <laughs> so, mission accomplished. It's well worth it. I, I appreciate everyone's help on that. That was, that was pretty fun. Uh, so, uh, I'd like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm done, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank well, you, Pat, very yes. much for, for being with us. Yes. Uh, on that note, again, Pat, you got me. We wish you seriously the best of luck at all uh, that we can possibly do with your new show. Um, we'll definitely be there to support you as well. And uh, we want to thank everyone in our audience that tuned in this week, everyone that watches our rebroadcast at our YouTube page, so, uh, youtube.com slash socialblade. Uh, check us out on Twitter also. Follow us there, twitter.com slash socialblade. And join our fan book on Facebook, facebook.com slash socialblade, which if uh, Aaron has some time, maybe she'll even get our fan page on our own site uh, per her story there. So look for that in the future. Oh. Um, lastly, we want to again thank our guest, EMFK. And we would like to lastly thank also hothardware.com, our sponsor this week and every week. So... Everyone, please come back again next week to socialblade.com slash show at 10 p.m. Eastern and 7 p.m. Pacific. And until then, remember, we are Social Blade.